Miami got some much anticipated good news on the recruiting trail. The commitment of Hollywood Chaminade safety Zaquan Patterson, who committed on ESPN during halftime of his nationally televised game. It was the boost that Miami needed as the Hurricanes worked to climb up the 2024 team rankings. But they did miss on five-star defensive lineman David Stone, and we got to figure out what's next for Miami on the defensive line. So let's bring on Steven Wagner of Kane Sports. Steven, you were on the show last Thursday, and we talked, and you had a good feeling that the Canes were going to come out of this going one, at least one for two. But on Thursday's show, I think you were more confident that they were going to land Stone than Patterson. So it ends up going Miami's way for Patterson. Zaquan Patterson, four-star safety, number three-ranked safety in America, chooses Miami over FSU, Auburn, and Michigan. Is this recruiting process finished for Patterson, or does Miami need to worry about this OV schedule he has? I'm not sure if Miami needs to worry about the OB schedule that he has per se, uh, but this recruitment is definitely not over. Um, he's planning on taking a couple more fall visits uh, for games and official visits. He said on Saturday that he plans to be up at the big house in Michigan for the Michigan Ohio state game. So that's definitely going to be something to watch because Michigan was a major player in this mm -hmm. recruitment. And he actually said going into the week that he felt like Michigan was kind of that front runner uh, early on. And then Miami ended up coming out of that late. Uh, but this recruitment is not over for Zaquan Patterson. Um, like I said, I don't think Miami needs to necessarily be worried because Miami was the favorite and the front runner for such a long time. We had him as the, we had Miami as the very heavy early favorite back in March. And I actually put in an RPM for him to go to Miami back at, back in, I think it was March 31st yeah. or something like that, because we were so confident in our Intel and we were so confident that Miami was so far ahead of the rest of the competition that it was going to be the Canes. And he respects the heck out of Mario Cristobal. He has a very, very strong relationship with Miami's coaching staff. And most importantly, I think uh, the fact that Miami's the hometown school and he really likes this idea of keeping the elite South Florida talent in South Florida. That's something that you can tell really resonates with him. I really do think that did end up playing a factor in his decision uh, to commit to Miami. Um, so I would definitely say that this recruitment isn't over, but I think Miami has to like the position that they stand in because it's a heck of a lot harder to flip a kid from a school, convince a kid to decommit and then go ahead and commit to your school than it is to just keep something that you already have. Yeah, no doubt. You'd rather have them committed than being out there trying to make these desperate late flips. And, you know, Miami was, like you said, they were the favorite in this one. The recruiting prediction machine had them way out in front for a majority of the offseason. And then late in July, early August, you know, Florida State heats up. They start landing K.J. Bolden. They land Charles Lester. It looks like they can't be stopped. And then... 48 hours out, I mean, it, all signs were pointing to the Seminoles. We had all the experts on here. You even thought, hey, this one is trending in FSU's direction. But as we've seen, those last 48 hours are critical. I mean, look what happened in Cam Franklin's recruitment. Over and over, we see decisions go sideways in the last 48 hours. So how big was this for Miami to win out over Auburn, FSU, and Michigan for Zaquan Patterson? It was absolutely massive considering that this is really what Mario Cristobal was brought in to do. He was mm -hmm. brought in to keep elite top 80 prospects in the country in South Florida. Uh, he needed to keep Zaquan Patterson home. This absolutely is a massive win for Miami because this is a prospect they couldn't afford to lose. Um, mm -hmm. They're really trying to build that that pipeline to Hollywood, Shaman, and Madonna. So that's something that's still ongoing. But Miami also frankly, needed a blue chip safety in this class. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably anticipating there are going to be some future safety depth issues after this year, just because Miami's uh, roster right now is so top heavy, really at the safety position. And we definitely think that Zaquan Patterson is a guy who can come in and kind of have that immediate impact. Um, definitely a really big win for Miami because I think arguably most importantly this was a major position of need mario cristobal didn't land a blue chip safety last year they hadn't landed a blue chip safety yet this year and they finally get one with patterson
All right. Now, Patterson was a massive land for Miami, but there is the nightcap, the commitment that happened in the evening. And that was five-star David Stone. And it kind of the opposite vibe here, Stephen, of what happened with Zaquan Patterson, right? The 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 trend was Oklahoma for the entire offseason. But Miami remained a constant. And in those last 48 hours, we heard a ton of Miami buzz. It almost felt like the opposite was going to happen, where Miami pulled off a huge upset and lands David Stone. But they don't. He ends up committing to the Oklahoma Sooners. How big of a loss was David Stone to Miami's defensive line class? Well, you know, it's funny that you asked that, Josh, because I was actually having this conversation with someone the other day where they said, you know, well, what's the impact of David Stone going to Oklahoma Mm -hmm. going to be for Miami? And quite frankly, the answer kind of is there isn't a major impact because this is a recruitment that isn't going to be over until December. This recruitment will not be over until that pen hits paper on signing day. Yes, David Stone is committed to the Sooners, but Miami has thrown the kitchen sink at David Stone. They've done an excellent job in his recruitment. Uh, They did a really tremendous job building relationships with his family. His mother was really, really impressed by the Canes, by Mario Cristobal, by the co-defensive line coaches, Jason Taylor and Joe Salabea. Uh, And this was not an easy decision for David Stone at all. Uh, We were definitely preparing for the possibility that he did pick the Canes because he was going completely dark. He was completely quiet uh, leading up to his recruitment. And he made it so that it became very clear that he wanted to be the only person who really knew where he was going to go. So we were prepared for the possibility that it was going to be the Canes because of the really tremendous job that they've done recruiting him. And yes, this really is uh, on paper a loss because Miami needed to land some big time blue chip defensive linemen in this class. And we saw those guys kind of go off the board one by one, you know, first Justin Scott, then Cam Franklin, now David Stone uh, going to the Sooners. But Miami is still going to make some very aggressive pushes for David Stone. We definitely think he's going to be back on campus. And we expect December to kind of be, you know, the be all end all before the trade deadline. Um, We think that Miami is definitely going to try to do what they did last year, which is come in very, very aggressively and try to flip some big time commits just like they did last year. And I think they will try to do the exact same thing with David Stone. I think his recruitment is very far from over. Yeah, you know, he's he's had this commitment date of August 26th set for a long time, and I'm sure he's thought a lot about it. But you watch the commitment. I watch the commitment. And I don't know if his family knew he was going to Oklahoma. So did you get that sense when you were watching it? Like, I think he might have just made his decision at the table. Watching it live, it really was obvious, man, he's keeping everyone in suspense on this one. You know, like I just said, I really think he wanted to make it so that he knew that he was really the only one who knew exactly where he was going to go. Um, Now, I could say, you know, who knows, maybe his family was all acting and they knew where he was going all along. But my first thought watching that commitment was, man, I think he just really surprised his own family. Um, You see, you know, his siblings in the background, you see his, you know, mom and dad at the table. And my first thought is, man, I think he might have just surprised his own family. Yeah, it wasn't uh, like that. It wasn't like they were shocked or upset. They were happy. Don't get me wrong. They were smiling. They were clapping. But it, I kind of got the sense like they were finding out at the table, which, you know, considering it was Oklahoma, the longtime favorite. I mean, I got to believe that Miami had a real shot right before to he almost grabbed that Miami hat put it on but he's an Oklahoma Sooner so we will see if they can double back Miami has a lot of big names on the board Steven who can Miami fans kind of turn their attention to now I know you said they're going to still be big game hunting but who are some of the names that Miami fans should watch on that defensive line recruiting board well like I said I really think David Stone is a uh, going to continue to be a guy. Aiden Breland is another guy who is still on the board uh, for the Canes at the moment. Five-star defensive lineman out of Modern Die that 
Miami staff really, really loves. And he's been keeping Miami on his radar for quite some time. This is a guy Mario Cristobal actually started recruiting whenever he was in seventh grade. And this was whenever Mario Cristobal uh, was the head coach at Oregon. And, uh, you know, we've heard a lot of buzz uh, about the Ducks for Aiden Breland, but I think he's probably going to be that next kind of, you know, really big name, big talent kid uh, that Miami has remaining on their board. You know, there's some other prospects uh, on their board, but I think Aiden Breland is definitely the biggest name that's going to resonate uh, with the most people. All right. You kind of hit on it earlier. Miami is stacking commitments from Chaminade Madonna High School, and that's the high school where you want to stack them at. So far, they got Zaquan Patterson. They have five-star wide receiver JoJo Trader, and there's one more from that school that they'd like to land, and that's the number one wide receiver in America, Jeremiah Smith, who's committed to Ohio State. What kind of an impact do you think having Zaquan Patterson and JoJo Trader on the commit list will have on flipping Jeremiah Smith? Well, I can tell you both Trader and Patterson are both trying to flip Jeremiah Smith to Ohio State. They are trying to keep this Chaminade trio together in Coral Gables. Uh, JoJo Trader kind of remarked to me the other day. He said, you know, if, if I'm able to flip Jeremiah Smith to, uh, to Miami from Ohio State, you can go ahead and call me the best recruiter in the country. And I told that to Saquon Patterson after he committed to Miami and he kind of laughed at that. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we, we are going to try to flip uh, Jeremiah from Ohio, away from Ohio State. Uh, now, of course, you know, we all saw the clip, uh, the interview that he did with ESPN during the Shaman Madonna game on Saturday where he said, you know, he definitely plans on being in Columbus in January, but that's not going to stop a lot of people from trying to make some pushes for him. Uh, Florida State is still trying to push for Jeremiah Smith. Florida is still trying to push for Jeremiah Smith. Miami feels like this is a prospect they cannot afford to lose. They are still throwing everything that they possibly can at him. Uh, but I think the biggest thing for Miami's chances with Jeremiah Smith, it's not going to be uh, whether his teammates and his best friends are going to go play college football at Miami. Um, the biggest thing is going to be, can the Canes produce uh, Can the Canes produce results in the season? Now, Jeremiah is going to be at the Texas A&M game on September 9th. He's also planning to be at Miami's game against Clemson on October 31st. If Miami's offense can take that drastic step forward, if the Canes can be competitive and or win both of those games and really show that this program is moving in the right direction, that they can be three, four, or heck, even five wins better if they beat both of those teams, then I think some conversations are definitely going to be have to be had uh, about where Miami sits on Jeremiah Smith's radar. Hey, all they got to do is win. If they win, everything falls into place. Steven Wagner, thank you for stopping in on a roller coaster ride of a weekend for the Miami Hurricanes and their fans following this recruiting. Appreciate you, Steven. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. And remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.